And I want to thank um, Dr. Lass, uh, Dr. Orge, and Dr. Perlman for putting this thing together. This uh, this an honor being at the 14th annual uh, research symposium. It's a dream come true. <laughs> so my my talk is about fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy severity to, to glaucoma. And again, it was uh, we had no financial disclosures. Um, you know, this was the Fuchs um, Genetics Multicenter Study was a was a big study involving more than 30 uh, participating sites throughout the the country, and a lot of people are involved in in collecting the data and putting everything together. So, you know, just to to show and illustrate how many sites were involved, it, it was a massive uh, study that was done. Um, just a bunch of different people getting together and trying to work on Fuchs dystrophy. And so, yeah, it was. Okay, and there was a fair amount of support from National Institute Research to Prevent Blindness and Ohio Lions Eye Research Foundation. And I don't want to repeat too much of what Karen was saying, but uh, Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy is a fairly common condition. Uh, she quoted 1% in the U.S., but I was getting a quote of 4%, so I don't know where the extra 3% came in or dropped off, but somewhere it's in there. Uh, it could result in uh, visual loss, loss through progressive stages of endothelial dysfunction and corneal edema, like how she was uh, just d describing. Um, glaucoma is also one of the leading causes of blindness in the, in the U.S., so it goes hand in hand to think that there may be some sort of relation, some sort of link between the two diseases if they're that common. Um, but, um, you know, f however, there's few reports in the literature examining this kind of relationship. There were some studies done in the past um, depicting Fuchs dystrophy with, with uh, shorter eyes, shallower anterior chambers, and narrow angle glaucoma. So there is some link as far as uh, narrow angle glaucoma, but very little regarding open angle and ocular hypertension. And so what we were trying to figure out was whether eyes with, uh, with Fuchs dystrophy were also predisposed to developing glaucoma or ocular hypertension. So again, this was a post hoc analysis of the Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy genetics multicenter study. Again, 969 individuals were um, were recruited. We had a 600, uh, over 1,600 eyes that were in the sample size, and uh, it included index cases of those patients affected with Fuchs dystrophy, family members of those index cases, both who did or did not have Fuchs dystrophy, and unrelated control subjects. Um, Again, eyes were excluded if they were deemed to have any sort of confounding uh, glaucomatous effects. So those that underwent prior corneal transplants, those that had cataract surgery within one year of the study examination, any sort of history of blunt penetrating or perforating trauma, or any sort of evidence of other corneal dystrophies, so those were all excluded from the study. Um, and. Uh, uh, the way that we identified whether or not a patient had uh, glaucoma or ocular hypertension, it was done entirely subjectively. So we didn't use any sort of uh, testing aside from uh, just history taking. So it was done through a physician-guided patient-completed survey. And uh, basically, whether or not you know, patients reported they had glaucoma, if they were ever told they had glaucoma, if they were using any drops for glaucoma, if they ever had any surgeries or lasers, anything related to glaucoma, they were deemed to have glaucoma. And that's how we identified them as that. Uh, the Fuchs grading was done into three different categories. Uh, those with no, no Fuchs were graded as group zero. Uh, not severe was graded as one to three, and severe was graded as four to six. And just like in, in uh, Dr. Rudo's presentation, same kind of scale. Uh, the corneas were examined by a cornea uh, tr fellowship trained ophthalmologist, and it was based on degree of confluent guttata and uh, presence of edema. So, you know, grade zero is a normal cornea, no guttata, and it goes up to grade six, where you have more than five millimeters of confluent central corneal guttata with stromal edema, with or without epithelial edema. And it was done on a mod modified scale from, uh, from Krakmer back in 1978. Uh, the other co-variables that were assessed in the study include age, sex, which eye was examined, right or left, uh, the presence of systemic diabetes, intraocular pressure, the time of day of the Fuchs grading, whether it was done in the morning or, uh, or afternoon, and central corneal thickness. 
And so in order to account for the correlation between uh, fellow eyes within the same patient, we had to use a generalized estimating equations because you can't treat um, two eyes within the same patient as independent from one another. So this was a means of kind of accommodating for that. In our results, we noticed that eyes with severe Fuchs dystrophy were more likely to have a concurrent glaucoma or ocular hypertensive condition. Um, so, you know, when you look at this, this graph, you can see that 11% of the index cases with severe Fuchs dystrophy uh, were statistically different from the controls. So that was a, a statistical finding. And even those with the, the affected family members with severe Fuchs dystrophy were also known to be uh, significantly different from the controls as well. In, with uh, the milder cases, there wasn't any, uh, any difference uh, between them and the control groups. And so even after adjusting for the other co-variables that were mentioned, like the age, um, which eye, diabetes, uh, Fuchs dystrophy was still significantly associated with the glaucoma or ocular hypertension. And then even after adjusting for, uh, for Fuchs dystrophy, the other covariates that were associated with glaucoma include increased age and inc increased uh, intraocular pressure. Um, no other covariates were associated with glaucoma, which kind of uh, goes against previous studies. You know, there's conflicting reports as to whether or not diabetes is associated with glaucoma or ocular hypertension. In our study, we didn't we didn't find that, and even a, a, th a corneal thickness was not as significantly associated with uh, with glaucoma or ocular hypertension. Um, there's uh, there's several limitations to the study. First, it was all done through a. Uh, post hoc analysis of the genetics multicenter study. So this wasn't the initial thing that people were, were looking at when they were conducting that study. It was all, we had the data and we just kind of made the study from that. Uh, and then the, the whole diagnosis of how patients were grouped as whether or not they had glaucoma or ocular hypertension was done entirely subjectively. We didn't use any sort of uh, nerve findings, nerve photos, no gonioscopy to figure out what kind of glaucoma they had. We didn't have any visual field um, parameters or OCT available. Uh, it was done entirely on history. But in the, at the same time, this was a, an important study because we, we did notice that patients with severe Fuchs, Fuchs grading were more likely to have a, a concurrent glaucomatous condition. Thus, it's uh, important to kind of to monitor for uh, glaucoma or ocular hypertension in these patients. Um, you know, the next step would be to try to do a prospective study, prospective study um, where we can actually, you know, analyze their visual field, analyze their nerve fiber, and uh, just kind of treat them like how we would usually do for suspects if they have, for uh, glaucoma suspects, if, if they have a severe Fuchs uh, dystrophy. Um, and it was a it was a big study too, so we had a, a huge sample size, so we were, we had a decent amount of power to report the findings. Um, and yeah, this is this is Cleveland. I just want to say thanks for uh, a very lovely three years. Uh, you know, Dr. Lass is over here, Dr. Steineman from Metro, Dr. Abrams from St. Vincent's, and Dr. Bernie at the VA. So thank you all for your attention. <laughs>